This is Flesgrio, near Cambrai. A hundred years ago, in the skies above the trenches, the story of a brilliant and brave British pilot reached its end. Richard Maybury had just won a bar to his military cross when he was shot down over Bourlon Wood. His grave proudly records his membership of 56 Squadron of the Royal Flying Corps. The young men who flew with Richard in this elite unit formed a unique band of brothers. This is the type of plane that Richard would have flown, the SE 5A biplane. Here at the Shuttleworth Collection, this plane actually flew in the Great War and still flies today at air shows. In 1917, this would have been cutting edge technology and that's why the SE 5As were what Richard Maybury and his chums were flying when they took part in the greatest dogfight of the First World War. Richard flew with the best pilots in the RFC. James McCudden, later to win the Victoria Cross, the old Etonian Arthur Percival Foley Rhys Davids, who dived into the fray shouting ancient Greek battle cries, and the young Keith Muspratt, who hero worshipped Richard Maybury as a great sportsman and a pucker gentleman. On the 23rd of September 1917, in the skies over Pole Capel, the men of 56 Squadron spotted a Fokker triplane, complete with a comically painted face. It was Werner Voss, regarded by the British as an even greater pilot than his aristocratic rival, the Red Baron. It was seven against one, but Voss not only turned to face them, for 10 breathtaking minutes, he outflew and outfought the finest pilots of the Flying Corps. But not even Voss could survive those odds. Caught for a second in a gun sight, he plunged to earth, his plane apparently shattering in a thousand pieces. Back in the mess, as you can imagine, there was an atmosphere pumped with adrenaline. But the reality was there was no sense of triumph. James McCudden, the flight leader, said, I shall never forget my admiration for that German pilot who single-handedly fought seven of us for 10 minutes and also put some bullets through all of our machines. His flying was wonderful, his courage magnificent, and in my opinion, he is the bravest German airman who it has been my privilege to see fight. Rhys Davids added to this, the man who actually brought him down, but if only I could have brought him down alive. Voss lies in a mass grave at Langemark Cemetery surrounded by solid blocks on which his name is cast in bronze, blackened by the fingers of respectful pilgrims. There was no respite for British pilots, who faced a daunting daily task. What are your thoughts on the men that flew these machines and aces like Richard Maybury? They were a very special breed of person. Took somebody with absolute steely determination and confidence to fly in something like this very good job that they were around at the time they were. I'm not entirely sure we could cope with that today. It's amazing sitting in here and comparatively this just feels so primitive. I can't imagine that somebody flew it, let alone somebody flew it whilst being shot at and having to fire back in response. The crucible of war had forged strong bonds between the men of 56 Squadron. Rhys Davids was invited to meet Richard Maybury's mother. Their impromptu tea party was held on an upturned aircraft wheel. During this brief encounter, Arthur Rhys Davids developed a liking for Maybury's cousin. They were said to have reached an understanding, but it was never to be realised. Rhys Davids is commemorated on the Arras Flying Services Memorial. He died only weeks after the dogfight with Voss. His aircraft fell onto the shell-shattered landscape of Passchendaele, and his body was never found. Keith Muspratt was sent to England but died in a training accident and his sorrowing parents buried him in the private family plot at Bournemouth, the grave looked after by the Wargraves Commission. Accidents of one kind or another accounted for nearly half the death toll amongst pilots in the First World War. It was a faulty aircraft that claimed James, or Jimmy, McCudden. In July 1918, his aircraft developed a technical fault when he was flying back to the front, and he lies in a tiny CWGC cemetery at Wavin, deep in France. The moving inscription is so apt for so many of his comrades. Standing here now, I'm struck by how young these men were. Werner Voss, Rhys Davids and Keith Muspratt were all younger than me and Richard Maybury was older, but only by a year at 22. Despite the atmosphere of glamour that surrounds aerial warfare, all I can think about is the tragedy of this loss of young life. 
If you want to find out more about these beautiful vintage aircraft, please do visit the Shuttleworth Collection. They are holding an Engineering Open Day on the 29th and 30th of December. It has been such a privilege for me to work as a centenary intern. It is one of the projects that will be supported by the Commonwealth Wargraves Foundation. Do find out more about our new foundation. It would be wonderful if you could support us. <laughs>